How's it going, everyone? This week is Nuclear Science Week 2023. And just in time for that, our game design brand, Golem Games, has released Quant Fusion on Amazon. So this is the box right here. Quant Fusion, the game of speedy strategic calculation. All right. So on the back, there's a brief description of the game or the set of games, but I'm going to give you a brief description right now. This is a game of speedy strategic calculation. Calculations have to do with arithmetic, with some basic chemistry and basic principles of nuclear physics and particle theory of matter. So what the game comes with is you have the actual deck of cards which is right here and we'll go through those and then there's the rules so let me show you that so there's a mini science lesson explaining all the science you need to know to play this game and that just fits onto a single card and then there's rules for the many many different games that you can play and we will go through a few of them and there's also this mini periodic table. So every card in this deck represents an element of the periodic table. And the cards go up to aluminum, element 13. But the different games you can play that are described in the rules that come with the deck go all the way up to iron, element 26. So this little mini periodic table can you be used as a reference, if you'd like, as you play the games. So what games can you play? Well, if we look at the cards, every card has three pieces of information on it. So you have the atomic number on top, you have the symbol of the element, and then you have the atomic mass on the bottom. So for example, this is nitrogen. Nitrogen has seven protons. Its atomic number is seven. The symbol is an N, and its atomic mass, on average, is 14. This is rounded to a whole number. So every atom has a nucleus, which is made up of protons and neutrons. The atomic number is the number of protons. The atomic mass is the sum of the protons and neutrons. So if you want to know how many neutrons, the most average uh, on average, uh, nitrogen would have, well, you would take the atomic mass and subtract the atomic number. The total atomic mass minus the number of protons, in this case, 14 minus 7 is 7, so it has 7 neutrons. If we take another one, so for example, for aluminum, you have 13 protons, atomic mass is 27, so the number of neutrons would be 27 minus 13, or 14. Now, the games you can play, well, first off, you can play every single game that you could play with the regular quant deck. So, for example, draw three cards and just use the numbers on top, the atomic numbers. And you sit around in a circle, three cards are drawn. Let's say you pick that difficulty three. And first person to multiply those three numbers, 7 times 13 times 5, they say the correct answer out loud, multiplying it in their head. They get those cards. That's their points. There's strategy involved, of course, because what order are you going to multiply them in to make it easy? What tricks will you think of? For example, multiplying by 5. Well, that's just multiplying by 10 and dividing by 2. And those are more easy calculations to do, so just get the 7 times 13 out of the way first. How are you going to do 7 times 13 if you don't have it memorized? Well, that's 70 plus 21, because 7 times 10 plus 7 times 3. So that kind of strategy comes into play. Whoever answered correctly first gets those cards as points. Then you draw the next three cards. Whoever multiplies 1 times 7 times 11 first says the right answer. They get those three as their points. And you could sit around in a circle with however many players you want. You don't need a difficulty of three. You can up the difficulty or down the difficulty as you go. You could do a difficulty of two, so then you have to do 12 times nine to get those points. You could do a difficulty of four. So then, I'm just drawing the next four cards here. 
you'd have to do 7 times 4 times 13 times 10. Whoever does that multiplication first gets the points. Of course, multiplying by 10 last strategically would be the best thing to do because that's easy. Just throw a zero on the end. And of course, higher difficulty means more cards, means more points if you answer correctly. Now, because these go up to element 13, the numbers go from 1 to 13, which is very similar to the quant deck, but it does make for a different experience because there are no zeros. And there's a different amount of the different numbers because the elements that are more rare in the world around us are also more rare in the deck. Now, here's what else you can do. You can play a variant called Atomic Mass. So for more of a challenge, instead of multiplying the atomic numbers, you have to multiply the atomic mass. So instead of 5 times 5 times 6, you have to do 11 times 11 times 12. That makes for more of a challenge. Let's see what the next three cards will be. So we have 20 times 20 times 23. Okay? So like a regular quant game, but with larger numbers, more difficult calculations, more challenging. Now, if you don't want to do it with multiplication, you could do it with adding. First one to add 20 plus 20 plus 23 gets those points, many different variants. It's all explained in those rules that come with the game. Now, what if you actually want to play the variant called Quant Fusion, what the game deck is named after? Well, for Quant Fusion, you sit around in a circle, however many players, maybe four players, five, two, three, however many you want, and you draw two cards. So let's do that. Okay, card one, card two. So we have helium and magnesium. Now, if these two were to fuse, what element would you get? Fusion means, now the fusion used in this game is a simplified form of fusion compared to how the real world works. If these two were to fuse and become one atom, and those nucleuses were to just join, so the nucleus of the new atom would have 13 protons, 12 plus 1. Okay. So that would be element 13 if these two were to fuse. What is element 13? First one to say that gets those cards as their points. Okay, now you could use this reference if you'd like. And you say, oh, element 13, well, that's aluminum. If uh, you don't want to use the reference, if you have it memorized, well, then don't use the reference. Or if you're trying to memorize it. Now, I'm telling you, you play this game a few times with the reference, you're going to have these elements memorized. Very great educational tool to memorize the first 26 elements of the periodic table. And of course, there's variants where you can go even higher than 26. So let's say someone says aluminum. If they get those cards, that's their points. Draw the next two cards. Okay, we have sodium and nitrogen. If these were to fuse, what would we get? Well, 11 plus 7 is 18. We would get element 18. First one to say that one gets those cards as their points. Now, you could use that reference. What is element 18? There we go. So, first one to say argon gets those points. And so on. And you can go through the whole deck like that. And there we go. Aluminum and helium, that's element 14. So, first one to say silicon. Let's see if that will zoom in for you quicker. Silicon is element 14. So, first one to say that gets those points. And that's the base quant fusion game. Now there are other games you can play with this deck. Okay, quant fusion is just the main one. There's other variants, uh, ones that have to do with the concepts of isotopes, ones that have to do with the concept of fission. So you're going to enjoy it, you're going to learn a lot, and That's, that's what's coming up for uh, Nuclear Science Week. It's already released on Amazon, and I'll put the link to the Amazon store in the description. So I hope you'll enjoy it, and until next time.